This is a quick demonstration of ARP cache poisoning from a Windows machine uh, running on a, a Linux machine. Let's start. Uh, IP config on this Windows machine shows me my IP address 10.2. I can ping 192.168.10.1 which is another Windows machine, 2 is myself and 3 is Linux that's going to poison. Default gateway 254. If I show the ARP cache table now, we can see three distinct entries for three different IP addresses. If we go to our web browser, we can see packet storm security here, and we can see that we've got um, a, a live network. So if we want to go to anything in particular, let's have a look at the, <coughs> the paper section. There's some white papers inside here. Go to magazines. Again, there's all sorts of things. So let's just go back to the main packet storm web page. What we're going to do is we're going to poison this Windows XP box using Linux. Let's start a Wireshark capture on our system so that in effect we can um, start watching all the traffic into and out of our box. At the moment we're seeing spanning tree, NetBIOS name service, so we're seeing all the basic stuff that you'd expect. Okay, 15, 16 frames. It's not going very fast, that's fine. Let's go to Linux. Here we have Linux. Let's do the same thing here. IF config, let's have a look at my IP address. 192.168.10.3 Let's ping 192.168.10.1 That's Windows XP32 Ping 2, Windows XP64 And 3, myself And 254, default gateway. Let's have a look at the op entries on this machine. Okay, we're going to type art properly. Here we've got, <coughs> again, a number of IP addresses. This time they've been DNS resolved. And we can see um, the MAC addresses again. So it's exactly what you'd seen in Windows, slightly, different, be slightly better format. Let's learn how to art cache poison. We run Etacap. This is the, N this is the uh, GTK GUI, Etacap minus capital G. We want to unified sniffing, that's step one. Ethernet Nord. We've only got one network card. Okay, we've started. Menus have changed. We can now do more. Hosts scan for hosts. We're scanning the network. We will find three systems. Doesn't actually display anything. We have to go to hosts. Display a list. One, two, and two five four. Okay. We're going to poison two. Okay. So we're going to add that to target one. Target two is going to be left completely open. So we're not actually poisoning anybody else, we're just poisoning 10, uh, 10.1, 10.2, sorry. Okay, we're going to perform a man in the middle, arc cache poison, on remote connections, click OK. We're now going to start unified sniffing. Effectively, we have now started to poison that system. Let's quickly have a look at our arc cache table. Okay, our arc cache table on Linux is exactly as you would expect it we know about all the different networks. Let's go back to Windows. Okay, so on the same command again, look at our ARP cache table. We're now only pointing at the Linux-based system. Linux was originally 000C, and all of them now are the same address. So as far as this box is concerned, it talks to any address by talking to Linux. Let's go to our web page. Let's change to insecure.org. And as you can see, we've gone to a new web page. Okay. Oh, where are we? Insecure. That's the URL. Sorry. I keep doing that in uh, Chrome. We've now got a new web page. Let's go back to Linux and see what that's uh, actually saw. Okay. We want to view connections and look at all these connections that have gone through our system. These are all idle now. Some of them are UDP, DNS queries, some of the TCP. TCP port 80 closed. <coughs> but that would probably be in the transport for the web page or maybe um, the graphics on the page. If we double click on it, we would actually see look at the uh, information that has leaked from our system and the information that has come both ways. So you can see that this information went from our box to a different location. We would see it the other way around if we linked on another or a different TCP thread. Let's open that one. As you see here, we leak a certain bit of information about our web browser, and in this case, uh, we have uh, a part of the frame. 
So again, we're watching the connections in this in these boxes almost live. If we go to uh, profiles, we can now see look, we've got all these different profiles of these different computers. If we double click on insecure.org, it is telling us what it has found out about that system. It is telling us its address is this. Okay, it is 12 hops away. It is a remote host. Okay, we have deduced a particular fingerprint for it, and it believes that it is running on Debian Linux. That is a complete guess because we're not sure about that fingerprint. Let's go to something that we do actually know about 10.1. Double click. Okay, we now know that it's a Toshiba, lap uh, a Toshiba device, possibly a laptop. We don't know. We don't know what the operating system is. Okay. Um, let's go to 10.254, double click, we know it's a gateway, we know it's Cisco Systems. Okay. So we have found out a reasonable amount about this particular network. Let's skip back to our Wireshark. I'm just going to stop the Wireshark for a moment and go right up to the beginning. Okay, And look what happens here. We suddenly have VMware, which is my Linux box, talking and saying a great deal of ARP frames onto the network. So as soon as anybody is responding, this is putting out a lot of information about who is who. This is effectively a scan. So this, this, the very beginning here, we can see these numbers changing. This is when uh, Etacat is scanning the subnet, looking uh, for a host to attack or looking for particular systems. We can see Cisco, <coughs> the default gateway, is actually asking what is going on on that network. Okay, So this is very, very typical of a scan being perpetrated on a network because you've got an oodle of ARP, uh, of ARP broadcasts onto the network. <coughs> we can see some legitimate traffic here, network time protocol. Keep scrolling down. Okay, we can see a, a Dell MAC address on a particular device talking back again. Right. We can now see that VMware is asking about all the MAC addresses of all the systems. Okay. And now we're seeing that VMware is starting to respond with lots of MAC addresses to different people. So everybody is now assuming that the MAC addresses for all those systems are this one. This is called an unsolicited ARP. And that's good. That means we're actually finding out some information here. So in our first system, in our first capture, we've shown traffic. And this here is, the, is a specific part of unsolicited ARP from VMware to maintain the poison in the ARP cache table on different systems. Well, that's interesting to catch. Okay, well how do we tear this down? How do we get back to our normal con condition? Okay, man in the middle, stop the poison. Okay, man in the middle attack has been stopped. If we go back to Windows now, and if we have a look at our ARP cache table, we see it's reverted back to normal. So we are no longer being poisoned. First of the quick screen caps. <coughs>